Alright guys, I'm going to cross wire some frames. I'll just show you some of the tools you might need if you decide this is something you want to do. I've got just a pair of wire nippers there. I think these are from Lowe's. I think they're the Cobalt brand. Got a pair of just needle nose pliers. This is the wire crimper from Brushy Mountain V Supply. And then I got the eyelets here. I think they're just aluminum eyelets. They go in the holes in the side of the frames to keep the wire from cutting your wood. And then just the uh, that's the wedge cleat nails from your B Supply house. This nail, just for reference, it's probably about a half an inch long. But anyway, I'll get the camera set up here and show you how I, I do my cross wiring. Guys, just from my own experience, um, my wife's just got into beekeeping and I wished I'd have cross wired the first frames that we put in with our packages. And the reason being, especially on these deeps, is let's see if I can get a, a representation on camera there. When I initially put the wax in these frames, it was laying nice and flat. I pulled this frame out of the hive after I cross-wired some additional frames up. But anyway, the bees had started drawing out the frames. And uh, this wax here is almost even with the front plane of the frame. And they, there's a few in there. I was able to get most of them out before they started drawing them out too far. But they had drawn some out that were already almost on the, the front plane of the frame. So it's probably going to be uneven cells on either side of the frame. There you can see the wax bone. It's a better representation of it there. But had I cross wired them, I wouldn't be dealing with this right now. But uh, anyway, I'll show you how I do them. Alright guys, I'll just show you kind of how I got the workstation laid out. Um, we've got a pegboard here and i got my frame wire hanging up on there. And what I'll do is I'll take my wire and pull it down. Pull a bunch of slack out. Anyway, I'll hook it up under my bench here where it holds it taut. I've seen guys make rigs and stuff where they'll have a board with a wire on. and I might do that eventually. But uh, I'll just, this has been working good enough for me for right now, but I'll just pull a little slack down, hook it up under the 2 before on my bench, and it just holds it till I need it. Alright guys, here's some of the tools I've been using to assemble the cross wires. I've just got a set of needle nose pliers, just a small ball peen hammer to drive the nails. These are the wire crimpers from Brushy Mountain. And just a set of wire nippers there. Then of course here's the frame eyelets. And then these are the wedge cleat nails for, for your frames. And just as a reference, that's I think the nails are five eighths of an inch long. But this uh the eyelet punch, I got this from Brushy Mountain, and to be honest with you, I'm going to complain about it. It should be, well, I got fairly big hands, but it should be probably two inches longer. If they had to use 25 cent more steel rod, made it a couple inches longer, then you can manipulate it better with your hands. But being the size it is, I got to use a leather work glove to to push in the eyelets or I gotta push it in my palm like that and it'll just kill you but what I'm probably gonna do is take an old screwdriver handle heat a screwdriver up pull it out of there swap it with that that's what they should have done to begin with is put it in a nice handle but uh, that's what I'm gonna do just not today I'll get the camera set up and we'll get a to working on a frame here right, guys so I got my frame here 
we'll go and press the eyelets in the end of the frame and on the on your deep frame it takes four eyelets and you can see where the the holes are in the end of the frame there All right, all the eyelets are in. Now we'll pull our wire through. All right, guys, we got our eyelets pressed in. Now we'll uh, put our wedge cleat nails in to hold our wire. And I'll show you here where I like to place them. I'll put one above right above the top hole just not directly above it I'll move it up just a hair to where you don't want to drive it like right down towards the center and then I'll do it for the same on the bottom hole put it just right above the above the bottom hole and just drive it about two-thirds of the way. You want to leave a little bit of meat hanging out to run your wire across. And of course you want to try to keep your nails as straight up and down as you can. Alright. So we've got our anchor nails in place and now I'll uh, Spool me off a bunch of wire. And guys, like if anything, I find it once you find, like for instance, a specific way of working, I like to try to stick with it. For instance, the way I wire the frames, I'll start on my top left. And pull the wire across. I'll be on top of the foundation on this one and on the next one I'll stick it under the foundation. In between the camera so now I'll pull me enough slack out to get me out across to the other side okay it should be enough feed me enough again to get across to the other side.
Okay, and I got me enough pulled through. I like to pull enough through. I'll show you here. Zoom the camera in just a second. To give me about an inch and a half of slack above the side of the end bar. I've got about an inch and a half of slack and I'll go on and fold it tight against the sidebar of the frame and then fold it over again down next to the shank of the nail. Take my needle nose, pull it taut. and give it about three or four wraps and as you're turning your wire you want to try to keep your pliers turning as you're turning in order in other words you want to keep your wire straight if, if you don't you'll break it so I got me about three wraps I'll cut the excess off I'll throw that little bit in the garbage because I don't need any pets with a piece of wire in the old foot. Let's see here. Now on my little tab here you see hanging up, I'll just take my pliers, clamp it taut against the head of the nail, and rotate it. And that'll that'll get your excess under the head of the nail. I don't want any poked fingers, man. I play guitar and if the less finger pokes I get, the better off I am. Alright, so we got our wire wrap, about three or four wraps. We'll go on and sink it. Okay. Now. And what I'll do now, just kind of one step at a time. Let's see here. Alright, you see we got excess hanging out. I'll just kind of by hand pull it taut on each side of the frame. That's a lot harder doing this on camera, obviously. So now I want to give myself about an inch and a half of slack to tie it off. So I pull it out and I hold on to both sides of the wire with my fingers. You see I got it between my middle or my third finger and my thumb and my index and my middle finger and I'll just cut it off about an inch and a half. Stand the frame up. Now pull it taut. Fold it over tight. And wrap it. About three or four turns. Cut off the excess. Discard it. Then I'll wrap the excess around. under the head and 
and sink it on down flush. That locks your wires in. So, check it. It's nice and taut. And that's without crimping it. So the final stage, and, I, and you really don't even need to crimp it if you get it this taut, but one of the, the final stages you can do with the crimp wire, just kind of stand the frame straight up and down, and I'll pull out on the wire with, with foundation in it. You want to pull the wire away from the foundation because you don't want to be grading your crimper on the face of your foundation. So I'll pull it out a little ways and then all you're doing is squeezing these two knurled wheels together and it makes ridges in the wire so it makes it taut. I'll just give it a squeeze and run it down. Flip it Obviously, if you didn't have your wax in there, you wouldn't have to, you know, be as careful. And let me get a close-up on what it does to the wire for you. And you can see the, the wire there is kind of rigid now where it does the crimping. And that makes it more taut. If it didn't have the wax in there, you could pluck it like a banjo and you could hear the difference in the pitch frequency. It'd be higher because it's more taut. Run it down, give it a flip. Alright. Alright guys, we'll do the final step. This is kind of a... Uh, I'll just show you here. The final step I'm going to do, I'm going to put some electrical current on these wires and actually melt this wire into the foundation to where it really locks it all in place. Let me get the uh, equipment set up and uh, we'll get back with it. Alright guys, what I got to complete the next task and that's to melt the foundation wires into the wax. This is a Schumacher one amp trickle charger and uh, take the trickle charger I got some wire this is just some fairly thick gauge copper wire I got from Lowe's I think I got a six foot section actually this is going to be leads for a uh, for an ATV winch so it's big gauge copper wire but anyway I'm using it for this now so just show you what I got going on. I've got the leads from the battery charger hooked up to my wires. Pos you know, obviously positive and negative to the like pairing. Okay. I'm going to set the these leads down on the floor and obviously you don't want them touching together so I'm going to spread them out to where they're not touching okay and I found I've just been using on the 6 volt function that's been working good for me so I'll stick with it so I got the selector on the 6 volts it's not plugged in obviously or, yeah, I don't want to be touching all that stuff together but uh, I'll go on and get my leads out of the way where they're not touching one another Leads on the floor is not touching one another. Okay. I'm going to go and plug her up.
and let's see. Okay. I'm going to do the top wire first. So in order to put a little bit of tension on this top wire, I'll put my pliers on it and show you here now on each side of the frame so I'm going to do this top wire it's running through this hole here in between the handle of the pliers so I want to put my contact as close to the rivet as I can so I'll touch my contact here and then show you here on the other side On the other side, it just we just have the termination point into the wood frame, so I'll just put my lead on to this wire. Okay. And just kind of pay, pay attention between the uh, handle of the pliers, and you'll see the wire melt through. And as soon as you see it starting to melt, there it goes. I'll give it just a couple more seconds. All right, I'm gonna pull it off. And then just, I'm gonna let it cool before I remove the pliers. And that'll bond it to the wax. All right, so several seconds has lapsed. I'm gonna pull it. And we'll see. Flip it over. And you can see that wire is now embedded into your wax. Alright, now I'm going to do the same on this next wire. Put a little bit of weight on it. Just as soon as you see that wire show through that it's melting, you want to pull your heat. Alright, it's coming through, so let's pull it off. Let it set several seconds. I don't know how much you can see of it. Let's get you in here closer. Okay, now we'll flip it again. Like I said guys, when a wire comes through the wood part of the frame, you want to put your leads as close to that as you can. See that end didn't quite melt down, so I just helped it out a little bit, pushed it down. Okay, and now the final wire. And that should be good. I actually got one of the embedding tools, but I I haven't used it yet. Because this is just, it's so handy. It works great. But let's see.
and as you can see those wires are embedded into that wax good you can push down on it and it's not pulling away it's like a drum head now but that's it guys that's uh now it's gonna see if i can sight down it now you can see that the wax is perfectly centered in the frame it's not going to move now I don't care how hot it is or what happens in the hive it's there to stay and that's cross wire in the frame hope you enjoyed it